Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about an incredibly important topic, how to find your purpose in life and work. Finding your purpose is one of your missions in life that will create absolute value, excitement and energy into everything you do. It should be the number one task you embark on this year and deciding upon your purpose and we're about to go through five steps on how to do that. Now to take the pressure off, Step one is the key component of finding your purpose. And I'm about to give you your life's purpose and summarize it, so pay attention. Your purpose in life is to be present and to experience. I'll repeat that. Your purpose in life is to be present and experience life. That's it. Not too hard, right? Now this is incredibly important to understand that your external goals, which you're about to decide on later, are simply parts of you being present and experiencing. Everyone has a different way of seeing the world. Everyone has different goals and values and ideas of success. But you are here for one reason. As a unique soul within a human body with five senses to appreciate the universe and become part of the universe experiencing itself. You get to do that for a short period of time. For some people it's 10, 15, 20, for some people 100 years but it's a brief moment of time and you must experience. And as long as you're present in every moment and experiencing it and being aware and mindful, you have completed your life's purpose. Now, on an external level, we can move to step two. In finding your purpose, it's not a goal. It's not an end game. There is no end game. This karmic journey that we're on has lasted billions and billions of years. Your journey may very well be your purpose and the person you become chasing your journey may very well be exactly what your purpose is. So as you follow your journey, the ups and downs, the trials and tribulations, understand that your journey is the purpose and the end goal that you're after is simply a small part of that journey. But we can't think that the start is better than the end and the end better than the start because ultimately, when we review it, we see it all as one giant journey. So with step three, ask yourself, what would you do for free? Do you write? Do you blog? Do you research? Do you like to act? Do you like to sing? Do you like to dance? Do you like to be outdoors? Do you like to be with animals? Do you like to work out? Whatever you would do for free in your free time needs to become your number one passion, pursuit, and what you follow through. Because what you can do is you can do this for a living. And if you can do this for a living, as the old saying goes, we never work a day in life. Now what's incredibly important to understand about this is your normal job, well let's say you make $100,000 a year in a job that you hate. You take that $100,000 and you spend it on activities that help you forget that you hate your job. Things like alcohol, TV, mindless routine, eating, are really things that people do to help forget their day and unwind. Now, if you were to take a job that paid, say, $50,000 doing something you love, that $50,000 wouldn't have to go to making you forget that you hate your job. And reality is, is from an economic standpoint, you're much better doing a job for half the money that you love than double the money that you hate. Think about that. Think about how much money you spend on vacations or fancy things that make you feel better because you don't enjoy the 40 hours a week that you're currently working. Step four, make a list of people you admire. Are they sporting figures, politicians, activists, YouTube identities? Whatever they are, list at least five, and then list five qualities of what you like about that person. Now what I can tell you is those people all followed a path to get where they are, whether it was a business person, a sporting identity, or a journalist. They went through certain building blocks to get where they are, and if they could do it, you can do it. But better yet, you have the advantage of reviewing what they did so you can miss all the um, mistakes and take some shortcuts. Step five. This is another good one, exhale and surrender. Surrender, understand that by choosing to be present, 
you've already manifested your number one purpose in life, which is experience, which is feeling, touching, loving, hating, being in the moment. Surrender to the fact that you've made a decision and you're following a path. Now it's not going to be easy and there's going to be problems. You can't get hung up on the problems or get too high on the highs. Just surrender. You are an instrument of the universe following an experiential level. Just surrender and allow the universe to take you towards your purpose. And by doing that, you will be given the manifest destiny of all of creation using you to bring onto this earth exactly what you're designed to do. So take some time, follow these steps, understand that ultimately by being present and surrendering, you will find your purpose. But if you want to be like a guided targeted missile on exactly what you want, then go through these steps and decide on your purpose. An incredibly important thing to do. Don't wait, get it done today. Thank you very much and bye.